Statistics and Excel, bell curve, people, weight, example, part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to start from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet that just had our beginning data on it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. We're continuing on it at this time. Quick recap of what we have done thus far. Our data is on the left related to weights of human beings. We're imagining that these are a bunch of data points we have a lot more data points in this example problem than we have seen in prior example problems. If I hit control shift down, for example, goes down to 25,000 uh, data points. Now we would imagine that something that's from nature, such as weights of human beings, would conform somewhat to a bell curve. And the more data points that we have about something that you would think would conform to a bell curve, the more likely that if we graph just those data points, we get something that looks like a bell curve. And we see that over here. So it already looks like the shape uh, is pretty close to a curve when we looked at that data. And then we calculated our mean, our standard deviation, our median. We saw that the mean is pretty close to the median and the mode, which is another indication that it may conform to a bell curve. We then plotted the actual bell curve using X's, lower X and upper X determined by four standard deviations away, used our norm.dist function. To, and that helped us to graph this one, which gives us the area under the curve uh, and instead of a bar graph, we compared that to the actual data as a percentage of the total and saw that the difference is pretty small. So we're pretty confident now that the bell curve can give us some predictive power. So now we want to ask some other questions such as, well, what if the area of the curve was lower or below some certain weight or below, above a certain weight? And we want to get to our area graph over here to make it a little bit more fancy to ask uh, different kinds of questions and we'll ask a few more little bit different questions than we've seen in prior presentations and we'll format this graph a little bit differently than we've seen in prior presentations as well all right so i'm going to get rid of the title from it notice that to build this graph all we did was select this data and then we added we went to the insert and charts and we added an area graph and then on the area graph, we changed the X axes to pick up our X axes here by selecting the graph charts. And we went to data 
and we changed these axes to pick up our X's. So now let's add a little bit more information. We might want the Z score so we can add the Z to it and that would be an a horizontal or the Z which is how close we are to that middle point, the mean or how far away we are, however you want to look at it. So I'm going to say this is going to be Z and let's make that black, white alignment. We'll center it or wrap it and center it. We don't really need to wrap it because it's only one letter. Not much to wrap right there. It's like a present that of a grain of sand or something that you're trying to wrap for Christmas and you, there's not much to wrap, you know what I mean? Because it's really small. So then we're going to say, all right, the Z-score is going to be equal to brackets, the X right here, minus, and we're going to go on over to the mean. So our individual X minus the mean, close up the brackets, divided by the standard deviation. That's our Z-scores. Now, I need to pick up these two numbers, make them absolute because they're outside of the data that we are working on. We don't want them to move down as we go down. Putting my cursor in F2, selecting F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 2. Putting my cursor between F3, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 3, and enter. There's our Z score. I'll open it up a bit. Put my cursor on the fill handle and double click it to, dra to, to drag it down. Not really dragging, it's just like a button. We're just button down, button it down. And then of course down here at zero, that is where we would be equivalent to the mean, right? So so right here it gets to zero between between 127 and 128, which 127.08 is the mean. So now we're measuring that that way. Let's add the z-score uh, to our graph. Now we can't really add another like it, it's what I want to do first is add another basically data point so that I can, in essence, assign the z-score to that second uh, data. So let's ask another question before we add the z. So I'm going to go back on over here and say, all right, let's say that we ask a question like this. We're going to say p of x is greater than or equal to 133, let's say greater than or equal to 133. And I can also do that in terms of a z-score as well. Uh, so so let's first do this. I'm gonna put my cursor on column H and I'm gonna add another column. I want another column here. So I'm gonna put my cursor on column H, right click the select area and insert. And it takes a little time because we have a lot of data. It made a skinny H. I'm gonna make G a little bit wider here. Now, what I'd like to do is make this dynamic so that 133 will change automatically. To do that, I'll put the 133 out here, and then I'm going to make this fancy. I'm going to get rid of the decimals. I don't really need... I'll keep the decimals. Then I'll go into here, double-click, and I'm going to make a fancy label. So I'm going to put an equals at the beginning. This is all text, so I'm going to put quotes around all the way past the equal sign. That's just text, so I'll end the quotes there. I want to tie it to, so tying it together is the and. You can see it looks like a knot, right? It's like how you tie your shoe. It's like all messed up. That laces are all messed up there. It's a knot. And then, so we're tying it together. And then I'm going to say that this needs to be not 133, but I'm going to select the 133, put my cursor down, and pick up this cell. You can't see 133 in it, but it has 133 in it. And then finally, I also want to tie it together with the shoelace and 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 then quotes around this last bit, quotes around it because it's another text field. And now we have a dynamic uh, formula there. Cool. All right. And then we can also say that if that if I'm looking at that X, what would be the related Z? So I could say the related Z, if I wanted to look at it in terms of Z's, would be equal to brackets, this X minus, and then I'm going to pick up the mean brackets divided by the standard deviation, and then enter. So that's the mean. So I can also then say I want to pick up P of Z, which is greater than or equal to uh, 0.51, close it up. And this time, 
I, again, I want to make it dynamic, so this changes with this. So I'm going to double click in here and do the same thing. Equals, I'll do it a little bit faster. Quotes, everything text up to here. Quotes, tie it together with an and not. And then we want that 0.51. I'm going to select that and pick it up instead with a formula right there. After that, I want another not, another and not. And then quotes around that last bit because it is text and enter. And now notice it comes out with something funny. I don't want all those decimals. I need to round it. So I'm gonna double click on it and do another fancy formula in front of this one, say round, round it. And then, and then I'm gonna round it and then comma to how many decimals? Two, close it up. So now that whole bit is rounding it. And there we go, the fanciness is like unending it's unending fanciness okay so if i was to look at that if i was to go over here and say 133 uh over here i already did like what's what's the likelihood of just 133 3.01 greater than would be everything from here down uh down to here you know it adds up to 32 but that's not exactly going to be what's over here because we're using uh area under the curve so let's do the formula now. This is going to be equal to norm.dist. And I'm going to say the X is now going to be this number, comma. The mean is going to be 12708, comma. Standard deviation, 1166. And this time I want it to be uh, cumulative. So it needs to be cumulative. Now, if I was to say cumulative, it's going to take everything up to that point. So you can see what if I put a one there. It takes everything up to there. And what I really want is to take one minus that amount. This is where it's right. I want to, I want to say, so I'm going to click on this and say, I want everything above that. So I need to go before the formula one minus one being a hundred percent minus that amount gives us the, the 30. Let's go to the home tab number group percentify it adding some decimals and you can kind of approximate it right you can say okay i wanted everything above so if i was looking at like 133 and i added these and i'd say everything above there is like 32 it's not going to be exact but it's it's if i came up with 60 you know you could say okay maybe i went the wrong way and i need to take 100 percent minus that amount because i'm looking at the top bit not everything from here down to the 133 right is the is the idea so i can also do that in z scores so i can do that in z's by saying norm dot dot s dot dist and then we're going to say that the z is going to be that that's all you need because it already has the mean and the and the standard deviation in it and then comma and we want to pick up cumulative one or true and once again this is going to be the inverse so i'm going to say uh close it up and there's the 69 that means i want to do one minus it should be the same so i'm going to say it's going to be one minus that amount and then percentify at home tab number percentify and you get you know the same thing now looking at the z score so maybe i want to then graph that over here so let's make a column for it i'm going to make a column for that and I'm going to say, let's see if I can make it dynamic. And I, maybe I can pick up these two like at the same time if I want to kind of group those together. So this is going to be equal to uh, this. And then I'm going to put an and tying it together, the not and that. And then boom. So now I've got that and that. I'm going to wrap it. Home tab, alignment. Let's wrap it. Make it a little bit larger. And now you've got a fancy header. We can center it font group black white all right so then what i want to do is then then i can say how am i going to get this number i want to pick up everything from 133 on down so what i'm going to do is a logical test function it's going to be equal to if brackets this 80 if that 80 is greater than or equal to the 133 then and i want to make that absolute f4 then comma that's what the comma means then what do you want to do i want you to pick up the p of x 
If not, comma, leave it blank, meaning double quotes with nothing in the middle, zero in the text field. Nothing's in the text field. Enter, zero is something. I want nothing in the text field. Get it right. Get your language right. You're confusing people. So now you have that. I didn't mean to confuse. Home tab, number, percentify. We'll add some decimals. So now we have everything down there. So, so then I could add this, of course, uh, uh, to the graph. However, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm not going to add it to the graph yet because I'm going to do the between to add it to the graphs. And this is another attempt to try to kind of use one graph uh, to do multiple things. So let's, let's say we added another question, which would be P of X is less than or equal to, let's say, 109 brackets. Now, I want to make this dynamic again. So I'm going to say 109, double click over here. I'm going to say this equals quotes. This is all text in quotes, tying it together with an and not and then selecting this information, putting my cursor down, picking up this cell, and then I'm gonna tie that together with an and not, and then quotes around that last bit of text and enter. Once again, it's dynamic, dynamic. That's how I like to be. And then I can say, what if I want also P of Z? Let's do the Z score. This is gonna be equal to the Z score, which is brackets 109 minus the mean 127 divided by the standard deviation. There's our z-score. So now I might want p of z is less than or equal to negative 1.55. Close it up. I want to make that dynamic. Double click in equals quotes all the way out to the, the equal sign, ending the quote, tying it together with an and not, and then replacing this bit with the actual number, putting my cursor down, finding the, the correct cell that has the number in it, even though you can't see the number because it's hidden, and then tying it together with an and again, and then putting the quotes around that last bit of text, and boom. And now it needs to be rounded, so I'm gonna double click on it right before that one add a round in front of it, round it down. So this second argument comma needs to be two decimals, round it to two decimals, close up the brackets, boom, dynamic, dynamic, just like, just like me when I'm performing Excel exercises in a very dynamic, I don't know what I'm talking about. So this is gonna be equal to the norm.dist, Let's do the calculation of X is now that 109 comma. The mean is up top 127 comma standard deviation 1166 comma cumulative yes or one and enter. So let's percentify it home tab number percentify adding some decimals and it looks uh, looks good. Movie B to the end. Let's do it with a Z score equals the norm dot dis norm dot s dot dist brackets z negative 155 comma cumulative yes indeed one or true and close it and there it is let's go home tab number group percentify add some decimals and there that one is so again if i wanted to make a column up there to represent it i can make a dynamic column header and I can say I want it to be this and tie it together with an and not an and not looks like a shoelace knot that hasn't yet been yanked down to not format but it's getting there it's getting to a knot if you just pull on the rabbit ears it will uh it will it will turn into a knot the and does Okay, so then I can say, how is this going to work? Well, I'm going to say, then I'll use an if thing again. And I'll say if, uh, if it's less than that amount. So we're going to say, okay, equals if brackets, logical test, if this number that 80 
is less than or equal to the this number down here, the 109, then with a comma, what do you want to do? I want you to take the P of X number. What if it's not? Then leave it blank. Double quotes, not a zero, double quotes. I don't want anything there. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone, okay? So what I, how many times do I have to tell you to just leave it alone, man? 109, now something went wrong because this one over here is F16. I need to make that absolute F16, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 16, enter and then double click it down. All right, and then it stops down here. So I'm gonna select the whole thing and percentify it. Home tab, number, percentify to recognize. And then, so now we see that it populates automatically. So now that I have those two parameters, I might then ask the question of the between question, right? So now I can say, well, what if I have P of X is less than or equal to, I write it this way, this might not be the best, the fastest way to write it, but 133 and, cause I like to have the X up front, greater than uh, 109. So now we've got the between, right? It's gotta be between the 133. I've got the upper ends now, and now I want the stuff in between the upper ends. So that would be kind of like, uh, if I was to imagine this, it would be kind of like summing up from, from uh, the 109 here down to 133. Again, this isn't exact, but that's kind of what you would be thinking, right? So, so you're saying, okay, so I want that now in the middle bit, but I want to make this dynamic based on the ends that I can put up top. So I'm going to say, let's make this dynamic. This is going to be equal to quotes all the way over to here. This one gets a little tricky. It's a little longer, but we've gotten our practice End quotes. I'm going to tie it together with an and, and then I'm going to replace the 133 with that 133. And then this and isn't a not and that's a text and. So I don't, I don't want to use that as a tying not and. So what I'm going to do is put another and so I can put that text and end with a quote around the and all the way up above the greater than. And I think it should be, or I should have an equal to there too. Close it up and then tie in another and replacing this 109 with that and then tying it together with another and and quotes around that last bit. All right, that is a mess of, a, of stuff to do, but you can see that now it's dynamic, man. It's dynamic. So now I can say, I can calculate this uh, if, if I so choose. And if I was to calculate it, I've got to take the upper end, uh, the upper end minus the lower end. Right, so I got to say, okay, I'm going to sum it all the way up to the 133 and then subtract out the 109. So it would be like this equals the norm dot dist. And we're going to be picking up the X. I'm going to pick it up up here now because I'm going to have all this kind of tied together. Uh, uh, that's the upper end comma. The mean is going to be this. And then I'm going to say comma. The standard deviation is this. And then comma cumulative, yes or one, close up the brackets, minus another norm dot dist. And then this X is going to be this, comma, the mean is going to be this. And then comma, the standard deviation is going to be this. And then comma, cumulative or one, yeah. And then enter, let's percentify it, home tab, uh, number group percentify. And boom, there we have it. I can also see it this way, which would simply be that if these are the two ends, then 100% minus the two ends is the stuff in the middle. In, in other words, this is the stuff up top and then the stuff down below. And the whole thing adds up to 100. So if I subtract 100 minus those two ends, I get the amount in the middle, which is going to be equal to 1 minus brackets this plus this close it up and enter home tab number group percentify add some brackets and there we have it 
We can also represent this in z scores, right? I can say this is going to be p of z, which is greater than, which is less than or equal to the 0.51. And I'm going to say and greater than or equal to the uh, negative 1.55, closing up the brackets, boom. Let's make it dynamic. So I'll double click on it, equal sign to start it out, quotes from the P past the equal sign, end quote, and to tie it together with a knot, selecting this number, replacing it with this 0.15. I'll probably have to round it, but I'll do that next or after. I'm gonna put another and this time. So I'm gonna say and, this and is a text and, not a code or not and. So I'm gonna put a quote around here over to the equal sign, end quote, replacing the negative 50, 155 with this 155. Uh, hold on a sec, I need another and before I do that. I've got to say and, and then replace the 155 negative with this 155, and then another and quotes around that last bit of text, end quotes, and enter. I need to round both of those numbers. I'm going to go into it, this F4, I need a round in front of it. And then the second argument is, well, I forgot the D. The second argument is going to be two decimals. So we've embedded a round. I'm going to do that here. Round. And then brackets, comma, two decimals. So I know that was a long formula, but it's dynamic now, which is super, super neat. So now we're going to say, okay, so now we can say that this is going to be the in-between with the z-score. So I'm going to say this equals norm dot uh, s dot dist we're going to pick up the z score the larger z score which is going to be the 51 and then comma cumulative or one close up not yeah close up the brackets and then minus norm dot s dot dist and then we want the z score of the 155 comma cumulative one or true close up the brackets enter Let's make it percent, home tab, number group, percentify, add some decimals. All right, and so then we can, we can also do that uh, this way. I can say this equals this, and I can do the same thing we did on the second bit here. These are the two ends. So if I say this equals one or 100% minus brackets this plus this, then I should get to the same uh, result. I forgot the minus sign though. One minus those. Home tab, number group, percentify, adding uh, some decimals. So there we have it. So if I go up top then, I can do my betweens, adding a column for the betweens. So I'm going to say this equals then. It could be this. Uh, this one, and then I'm going to put an and and tie it to this one. So we get that dynamic formula again. And I can then go to the home tab, alignment, center it, wrap it, and make it black and white. And so there we have it. I'll make this a little larger so that we could see the whole thing, the whole huge formula. Probably too large. I don't know, I'll keep it, I don't want to make it huge, but that's the idea. Okay, so then on, on here, instead of me doing a logic test that has an and or or embedded in it, I'm just going to say, hey, look, this is where it gets different than what we did before. I'm just going to say, I just want the bit in the middle, this stuff in here. So so, so what I'm going to do then is is I can use the two that I already have to, take, to pick the one in the middle, right? So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to use an if test, I'm going to say this equals if logical test, I'm going to say brackets, and I'm going to take the sum. So now I'm going to embed the sum function. If the sum of these two cells, uh, now if they have anything in them, I don't want to include them. If they, if they uh, don't have anything there, if it's blank, then what I want to do is pick up the related P of X. So I'm going to say the sum of those two cells, if those closing up the brackets 
are greater than zero, and hopefully this will still be greater than zero, even though it's a quite small number. If it's greater than zero, then what do we want you to do? I'm gonna put double quotes. I want you to leave it blank over here. Comma, if it's not greater than zero, what do you want us to do? I want you to pick up the P of X. So I'm gonna say then, uh, enter, they found an error with it. I think they just closed it up. Let's copy it down, fill handle, double clicking. And then if I scroll down, now you can see it's populating just in that middle area. So now if I select all of my data, I'm gonna go to the home tab, number, percentify, add some decimals. So now this is taking that in between area. So in my graph over here, I'm just gonna graph, I'm just gonna graph this last bit in my in my graph so i'm going to say and that'll give us kind of some references that might give us some indication about all of these three things without having my graph have multiple layers on it other than two layers so now i'm going to go to my graph and i'm going to say that we want to go to the chart designs i'm going to insert another data and this time i want to go to add another data the name of the data is going to be this dynamic name we created I'm going to remove this series and select the little button and go from top control shift down make sure i pick up everything and we're going to say okay boom and okay so now we've got our second data here which is picking up that middle point right so now the orange represents the middle i'm going to bring this down a bit so we might want to add a legend plus button legend okay it's a quite a long legend because of the because of the long title so let's go into that legend and see if i can put it at the top maybe since it's so long that might fit a little bit larger and so i'll say okay and then i could add another the z score at the bottom so i could double click on this one we have our chart information primary axis we want to add a secondary x axis for the z score so then i'm going to close this up and then we'll add the axis by going to the select data. Now I have these two data. So I have the second one I can use instead of the X's, the Z's. So I'm gonna select my data, this item, and I wanna pick up my Z's from Z down to here. And this is the one that gets a little finicky. So I'm gonna say, okay, okay. It looks like they did fill them in. So I'm gonna say, okay. And so now we've got our Z's. I'm gonna delete this thing on the right. I don't think I need that. And then delete that. And then plus button, axes. I'm gonna add the secondary axis. There's my Z scores up top. Grabbing that, double clicking on it, bringing it to the labels down to the bottom. I'm doing this fast because we've seen it before. We're running long on time. I'm gonna bring it to the bottom. Now notice it froze right there. I have a lot of data, sometimes it freezes. If you close Excel and open it back up, sometimes it'll it'll unfreeze if it doesn't move the data. You can see it's a little tweaked right here so you can refresh the screen. So there we have it. Now we've got this kind of dynamic chart which can kind of help to see, to visualize multiple things, you know, at one time, right? We might be able to go over here and say, okay, well, if, if we have uh, P of X is greater than, and we can populate uh, the one, the, this is where the 133 is. And I could say, okay, 133 uh, is, is here greater than. So I'm looking at kind of like the blue area on the right-hand side. And then if I was to ask this question, uh, P of X is less than 109. Well, then I can put that on the lower end, right? The, one, the uh, 109 and say, okay, that would be the blue on the lower end. And then the amount between, when we ask a between question, I could enter the two outer parts of it and the between then would be the amount in the middle, right? So if, if this question was asked, I could say, okay, this is gonna be the upper, the lower, that will give me the dynamic between, which of course in here will be the orange. So this is you know, an attempt to get a chart that you can kind of adjust fairly easily no matter which kind of question that you might that you might be uh, dealing with. Now, note there is another another question that we want to just point out here uh, that we didn't look at last time. So we might ask a question like, "What's the probability of lower 
end. So let's say we know the probability of the lower end is 0.45, 45%. Home tab number, we're gonna say, okay, we know the lower end is 45%. Let's say that was the blue here. You know, if we know we know what that end is. So then the question is, well, what's gonna be the X value related to that or what's the uh, what's the Z value related to that? So now we're, we're, we can use the norm dot inverse to find that. So let me show you that one. What would be the X value? It's going to be equal to, let's put it in the outside. It would be equal to the norm dot inverse tab. So now we have the probability, not the X. See, we have it reversed now. We don't, we don't have the X. We've got the probability and we want to get the X. So I'm going to take the probability, comma, and then the mean is still the same. The rest of the bits basically the same. The 127, comma, the standard deviation is 11.66. And then uh, that's it. We don't have a cumulative argument because we already know that this 45 is the cumulative up to a certain point. We're trying to find the X, uh, the X value there. So we're going to say enter and we get to uh, 125. We can do a similar thing with the Z. So I can say the Z uh, value would be equal to norm dot, norm dot S dot inverse. And then we're just, all we need is the probability 45 and that's it, right? Because we already have everything else is kind of in the Z. So I'm going to say, all right, close it up, enter, and we get the 0.13. Now we can also see what's the probabi probability upper end. So if we know the upper end is like 55%, for example, home tab, uh, number percentify. We know the upper end. So if I look at my chart, I'm saying, okay, the upper end, the blue is, is 55. Well, I have to then do like the inverse because my cumulative references go up to the lower end. So I have to do something like a one minus thing, right? So it'll look like this. It'll be equal to the norm dot in. So let's, well, let's find the X value equals norm dot inverse tab and this is where the one minus comes in so that 55 is the upper bit so i'm going to say this is going to be one minus that right because we have to calculate it from the low end on up right so we have one minus that and then that's going to be comma the mean and then comma the standard deviation and then close it up and boom and then I can do the Z value in a similar fashion equals norm dot S dot inverse. And then the probability is just the, we need to one minus the 55, closing it up and uh, enter. And so that you get the 0.13. Notice when we looked at these two, these two examples, this 45 and the 55 add up, you know, to 100. So you can see why we're getting the results are the same here. So you can kind of mull, mull that over. For now, I'm going to uh, make this, let's just do some formatting. I'll make this blue as we normally do and bordered home tab font group. I'm going to make it uh, border and blue. If you don't have that blue right here. It's in the standard. There it is. I'll select all of this. Control shift down. I'm going to make that border blue. And then over here, my charts look nice and snazzy. So that's good. We have a lot of snazz. Not sneeze. We don't like sneezes, but snazzies. Snazzies are good. All right. If I review it, uh, editing. Okay. So that I think that's good.